Hello everyone and welcome to this video which is in our Great Engine Opening series and in our Crazy Leela series. I'm Grandmaster Matthew Sadler and in this video we are taking a look at the solid and respectable Queen's Gambit declined but not a solid or respectable way of dealing with it. Let's have a look what Leela gives us. So after d4, d5, c4, e6 um, I normally play knight f3 here, knight c3 is also possible. By the way, at the weekend at the 4NCL, I saw that uh, Jonathan Rousen, Scottish Grandmaster, after knight c3, a6, played the move g4, which uh, he said was uh, not uh, analysed with Leela, but inspired by uh, all the posts that I'd been uh, uh, making about uh, Leela's g4 ideas. And uh, indeed, it's uh, quite a nice line. But OK, I played uh, knight f3, knight f6, Knight c3, bishop e7, that's the queen's gambit declined. And now um, not your bishop f4 or your bishop g5 or your queen c2 or even your g3. It's g4, of course. So that's not the only um, idea that you can get from Leela. Um, in the TCEC gauntlet, um, uh, the bonus event with uh, Leela with contempt playing against all sorts of uh, different engines, um, this was actually played. Um, and um, uh, after c6, then just h3, bishop f5, and g4, bishop g6, uh, e3. And uh, somebody pointed out that this is, uh, yeah, you know, sort of uh, similar uh, to uh, to what uh, Botvinnik did against Petrojan um, in um, all those years ago in the World Championship. That was uh, in this line, in actual fact. So knight c3, bishop b7, takes takes. Bishop f4, c6, e3, bishop f5, g4. But obviously a slightly, uh, yeah, slightly more obvious somehow to uh, to play g4 in um, in this position because you're you know you're targeting a bishop with tempo. Here Leela is um, is you know really choosing uh, full out to um, uh, to set it up and uh, and really play h3 and g4. But yeah, I mean uh, the uh, the ideas are similar and it's a, a very interesting line indeed. Um, and Leela only made a draw against Vice in uh, in the gauntlet, but still very interesting game. Um, however, what I'm playing is the move g4, which is a little bit more violent. No preparation with h3. We're just looking for g5. And, uh, you know, it's not a bad positional move. Um, first of all, you know, you've got the normal disruption that you get with g5. You're disrupting a knight on f6, uh, which is going to weaken black's control of the center, you know, and also chase away a defensive piece from the king's side. So that's not at all bad. And uh, it's got a special bit of logic to it because Black's played the bishop to um, to e7. I mean, when the bishop can come to b4, um, then you know g4 to g5 doesn't feel like it's got so much point because the, the you know the knight has got a very secure spot on e4. But having played bishop e7, there's a couple of points to it. Um, first of all, the the main point is that knight takes g4 is an extraordinarily bad move um, because I just play rook g1. If you go back to f6, I go rook takes g7, and this is really serious. I mean, um, this is now a game against a, a 25-66 rated uh, player. d takes c4, knight e5. We're hitting this guy, and, uh, well, black played knight c6. When knight f7, queen d4, knight h8, and black resigned. Ten moves. Thank you very much. So um, um, that is, um, you know, rather scary. I had a, a nice game against an opponent who played knight h6. Um, rook takes g7 and then knight f5 and uh, well rook g1 is very strong you know according to the engines but um, I went for quite a nice attack takes takes knight e5 check king f8 e4 with tempo takes queen h5 um, queen e8 to cover um, the f7 square bishop h6 check of course with king g8 we've got queen takes c8 mate so knight takes takes bishop h3 hitting e6 Bishop f8 check and knight takes e4, which I sort of, you know, uh, actually I think this was sort of what I had in my mind, you know, when I was thinking about playing rook f7. It, it's quite a few moves, but it flows very naturally, you know. Um, and I thought that this would be pretty good in blitz game, really. And uh, it turned out to be um, after h6 there, rook h7, bishop e6, black resigned because uh, takes, takes, king h8, knight g6 is checkmate, and that was a 27-48 rated uh, Lee chess player uh, beaten in uh, in 19 moves 
So, yeah, surprising the number of people who play knight takes g4. I'm sure in analogy with, um, you know, the, um, the Shirov semi-slav or whatever, where you're allowed to take it, but it's just really, really bad in this position. So what else does black have? Well, one interesting idea is to play d takes c4. Uh, very common in actual fact. Uh, the idea is, you know, when you go g5, the knight can come to d5. That's quite, uh, quite common there. Um, g5 is very reasonable. You know, this is what Stockfish is uh, playing. I've played it a few times. It's just some, uh, yeah, some sort of uh, typical semi-Slav gambit with a, a weird pawn on g5. But, I mean, you go h4 and knight e5. Not at all bad. Um, what I'm tending to do is to play e4, which is very ambitious. I just want to not allow the knight onto d5 and just play g5. And um, actually, you, you can see probably now why I'm showing you this video. Um, I'm doing this video after the one on the Vienna, because actually what ends up happening is that I play my Vienna line, um, but with an extra pawn on g4. Now, who knows how good that is, but um, it certainly has worked out quite nicely in a number of games. Just castles, always sacrifice those pawns. And, uh, well, I'll just show you plenty of lines. I mean, it ends up getting better for white pretty quickly, this. So I think it's an extremely dangerous line for black. Um, but um, just show you one of my games. Takes, takes. Castles, rookie one. Black didn't dare take the second pawn. Just gives white some tempi and uh, you start teeing up on the king side. So um, knight d6, bishop d3. And now our opponent played h6. You know, obviously worried about knight g5. I could play a move like bishop c2 and queen d3. That's pretty dangerous, but, well, you know me. I just kept on going. g5. And um, uh, here my opponent played the move f5. Um, just with the idea of, uh, well, trying to block the b1h7 diagonal and hoping that, you know, I'm opening up the g file, but my king could be in danger as well. Nah, but my king's never in danger. <laughs> Knight e4, hg7. Rook f7, takes, takes. Knight e5, rook g7, king h1. And, uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, this light square, the light squares are weak around the white king, but um, there's just no development, right? I mean, uh, look at all these guys. So um, queen h4 was played, and now rook g1. Always the simplest way, just exchange off the opponent's defensive pieces. And after knight c6, I took, took, check there, queen g6. I didn't bother finding out whether there was mate because bishop g5 check won the queen and a 26 25 player again you know just beaten very very quickly and convincingly so yeah you know the d takes c4 is a very normal line but very very dangerous for um for black here maybe the most sensible line is to play um uh, castles for black and then we've got a, a few ideas. I mean, g5 is the stockfish idea, knight e4, and then queen d3, which is, again, pretty reasonable. Um, what I've been doing is playing queen c2 here, um, just with the idea simply of playing uh, g5 and not allowing the knight into e4. And uh, what it seems to, what seems to cause, really, is that uh, causes black players to, well, panic a little bit, I'm not sure, but at any rate, they want to sacrifice a pawn on e4 for counterplay. But, yeah, you know, Within the ninth move, I'm already a pawn up, and that's a central pawn as well. You know, it doesn't feel too bad for uh, for white. It's quite a nice result. Obviously, if knight takes g4, I just go rook g1, and I'm uh, very happy with that. So um, c5 is what a lot of players are playing, and then I throw in a g5. And uh, yeah, quite a few um, quite a few games here. Knight e4 is the one I'll um, I'll show you there. Um, takes takes and queen takes e4 and i've had a couple of uh, moves here takes takes queen c7 was uh, was one of them just trying to get rook d8 and bishop b4 but i played bishop d2 rook d8 queen f4 bishop d6 queen h4 and the interesting thing is that you might think that having this pawn on g5 in some ways is quite bad because it's it's blocking you know access to for example g5 for the knight but it's not that simple because uh, there's an idea that I've played countless times, inspired, I think, probably by the uh, uh, the Knight of Sicilians, which I'm looking at a lot at the moment. Um, uh, yeah, you're, there's a fresh <laughs> blitz repertoire on the way uh, once this one is completed. So um, just castles. And after Queen B6, I just go G6. Very typical idea in this line. And, you know, actually you're using this pawn just to weaken the king. If HG, I've got stuff like Knight G5. And uh, if fg, well, I've got knight g5 as well, <laughs> just attacking this one. And then, of course, you know, putting the bishop on h3 is quite key somehow, you know, just to, uh, um, just to attack the pawn on e6. Comes in handy so often. 
And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I finished off the game uh, pretty quickly here. 26.73 rated opponent here. So bishop e3, queen c7, c5, bishop e7, queen e4. Beautifully centralized there. Rook f8. Should have played rook d1 now just to, uh, to meet knight c6 with rook d7. But I was a little bit, yeah, wasn't so good this one. But I redeemed myself with king h1. And after bishop f6, rook g1, black resigned. Queen takes g6 is the threat. And if you go knight e7 to defend it, I've got rook takes b7 there. Um, yeah, you know, again, a 2673 opponent. I, I don't mention it, you know, to boast or anything. It's just to, to give an idea of how powerful this is. Because if these players, you know, in, 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 in Blitz are, are really struggling to, um, to keep the white initiative at bay, then, you know, I, I think you can, really, you can really conclude that this has got some real danger. It's not just, uh, you know, random rubbish or whatever. You know, Leela really has seen some dynamic potential and I'm, you know, and uh, I'm managing to unlock some of it at least, you know. So, um, so yeah, very powerful game. I'll, I'll finish with a slightly disgraceful one. Um, I was not paying proper attention here and got myself into rather a lot of difficulty. Bishop d2, e5, bishop g2, rook e8, castles g6. So now, yeah, I just wasn't, I don't know what I was doing, why, why I'm not playing bishop c3 or something. I played the ridiculous move, a3, and uh, bishop f5 happened. And I was too proud to play queen d5 or anything like that. So I played queen h4, and after e4, I'm just losing a piece. But never mind. We just sort of uh, carried on a little bit. It's blitz after all. And I am very proud of this idea. You might want to pause it and uh, pause the video and think what my uh, threat is. It's rather nicely camouflaged, the bishop, the rook, stepping in front of the bishop, which is, I think, why my uh, 2745 opponent sort of uh, played rook d8 fairly quickly, missing the beautiful queen h7 rook h4 and rook h8 checkmate <sighs> it's um yeah that's rather disgraceful that one but um but i think you know you, you can you can see just uh, all over the place there is massive of potential and danger um in this uh, in this opening i mean i think uh, yeah i mean you know when you consider how how difficult it is to get any sort of uh, edge with white against the queen's gambit declined with bishop g5 bishop f4 all these boring lines, um, you know. Then um, G4 is 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 fine. I mean, it's not uh, it's not a bad move. White's not worse after that. It's uh, a very you know sensible move in the Queen's Gambit declined. So um, uh, yeah, I definitely say you know give it a go because uh, um, yeah, definitely uh, it's scored you know pretty heavily for me and it's given me a lot of unexpected fun against a very solid opening. So there we are. I hope you um, you enjoyed that. Um, if you like the video, give a like, subscribe to the channel, take a look at my new books, Silicon Road to Chess Improvement and uh, uh, Reengineering the Chess Classics. And otherwise, you know, thanks very much for watching and stay tuned to this channel because there's lots more of this sort of stuff to come. Thanks very much.